see what the what the what themselves into. Sheer tiredness that they just couldn't cope with it. Two of them were down with the cramp, but they'll recover to enjoy the celebration. Well, Ivan Golat greeting Scott Crabb, who played so well until that bad injury put him out of the contention. Craig Brewster now has a chance to save up at the moment. Well, he's still in pain, obviously, but these United supporters have travelled here in vain six times in the last 20 years. But now they've made it, and Ivan Golak is the man who has breathed this sense of belief and confidence into the troops. The result has been a tremendous performance, the climax of the season, and Rangers' dream of back-to-back -back trebles is over. And Dundee United go into the European Cup Winners' Cup by right not as losing finalists but having won Paul Hegarty there who has been involved in the losing side for United coach at Tannadice now is on and the delight is obvious throughout the United ranks well how well they deserve an occasion like this having travelled and hoped so frequently and had these dispels but now they can enjoy this moment when the cup will be presented, this Malpass. Uh, what a great career he's had now. And Ivan Golac is down below. Ivan, you promised success for Dundee United at the start of the season. How do you feel? Well, I, th I, don't, I don't think it's a bad enough to win a first. You know, uh, obviously, everybody's dream. I feel absolutely delighted for everybody, you know, connected with United, but more, more than anything for the players. What sort of emotions did you go through this afternoon? I'll tell you something, I feel very, well, very very quiet. I, I knew, you know, we're going to make it. I knew we're going to make it because we're so determined, you know, before, before the game and we had so much relax. We knew it's going to be ours. A touch of good fortune, possibly, about the goal. Well, yeah, well, but we didn't score in, in a few better occasions, you know, and uh, it came nicely because uh, Christian Daly, they've done everything, the whole job, you know, and I'm, I'm so pleased for them. What now, Ivan? This is obviously something to build on once the celebrations are over. Oh, goodness me, you know, nice couple of months, really good break, because I need it, you know, that's going to be first break after two and a half years. But it's magnificent to looking forward now to your pre-season, because we're going to we're gonna do a lot of nice things in the future. So the walk in the park obviously works. Well, if you can't enjoy yourself, I tell you, you ain't got a chance to win. They did enjoy themselves. Whatever they've done, and I'm, I'm glad you for them. Enjoy yourself tonight. Well done. Thank you, Rob. So the delighted manager of Dundee United, Ivan Golac, and these supporters waiting for the moment when Morris Malpass appears to collect the trophy, decked in tangerine black. The Right Honourable Ian Lang, Secretary of State for Scotland, presents the Scottish Cup to Morris Malpass. A moment he perhaps thought he would never enjoy. One of Scotland's top professionals over the last 10, 15 years, Morris Malpass, now collects the Tenants Replica Trophy. Dave Bowman, the hero, it's his eighth anniversary at Tanadise. He came with Jim McAnally here at the same time, eight years ago. Andy McLaren goes to Gordon Passage, who got the Tenants Man of the Match award. Then Alec Cleland, who played so well on the flank. Brian Welsh, an undoubted hero against Mark Hayley. The keeper, Guido Van de made that incredible save against Alexei Mikhailichenko. A young Christian Daly, who created the winner for Craig Brewster. David Hanna has swapped jerseys there. Gary Boland didn't get on the field, but he's enjoying the moment. Jaron Nixon did. He earned the booking, and then a cup winner's medal. And the goal scoring hero, Craig Brewster, his 20th of the season, and the one he'll remember best for the rest of his life. So the players coming down now, they'll go to do a lap of honour, I've no doubt, towards their supporters. Ian Ferguson, number eight, they are swapped by David Hanna. That finds its way into that picture. So that's the picture you'll see in the papers tomorrow morning. A battery of photographers. Morris Malpass surrounded by his teammates. Particularly sweet for Jim McAnally and Dave Bowman and Morris Malpass.
help us. We've been here in vain before. Well, the New United under Jim McLean won the league. They won the League Cup twice. They went to the final of the UEFA Cup, semi-final of the European Cup. But this was the one they couldn't manage. And it's been achieved under Ivan Golak. The happiest man, I can tell you, in the stadium is likely to be Jim McLean, the chairman of Dundee United. So the players are welcoming the applause from the supporters as they go across now. Well, the cup is shown to the Dundee United supporters to the East Stand. Well, it's 11 years since the league championship was won. Oh, scenes like this for Dundee United supporters. Brian Welsh holds the trophy. Well, Paddy Connolly is there. And we'll leave two, I'm sure, for Billy McKinley to see his side win the cup in his absence. Well, I'm going to be a very close look at this trophy. They won't find Dundee United's name on it until the engraving is completed after 1994. Players across there, except Craig Brewster, who's been surrounded by press men, photographers. But Morris Valpas is now available for interview. Morris, Morris, you've lived through the bad times. This must be a sweet one. Yes, after the last day, huge disappointment. It makes it especially, especially better. Uh, fantastic, Craig. Was what a great week. And the boys were absolutely brilliant today. Did you always feel like you had the winning of this one? Yeah, we're confident. We had good games against Rangers before. And we knew on the day, if we took our chances, well, we'd win. Those last few minutes must have taken forever to pass. The last four minutes were like four months. Is this something to build on, do you feel? I mean, can Dundee United take yeah, it from here and got the cup final thing out of the way, finally? Yeah, I think that's it. the main thing. We've got that hoodoo, as you put it, out the way now. We can just go and enjoy our football and improve in the league next season. Davey, what about this mob behind me? They uh, certainly give you some backing. No, it really does. It's a great day for everybody. I mean, we've been here, a lot of them have been here probably seven times. And for, to, for us to win it today, that's what it's brilliant. Well, it's a way for everybody. What, what did you see of the goal? Nothing. <laughs> the net, that was it. That's what it's a way to. I thought Kessing was put uh, in to begin with. Then, good old Kip. Uh, they followed up to and Different class. Good game. Good well, game. if we can wait for a second, we'll get Craig Brewster in here as well. The man who tucked away that goal, it wasn't, your, uh, wasn't one of your long range efforts, but uh, it counted for a lot, didn't it? Best goal of the life. I thought Christian did absolutely brilliant. Rob the keeper played it across the goal, and I thought, please come off the post. Came off the post, sir. Thank you. Probably the Rover stuff. What a season it's been for you. Fantastic. Uh, win the first of last year, very Rover. To come uh, here, Hamden, win the Scottish Cup final. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. A very happy match winner there, Craig Brewster has scored the winning goal in 47 minutes after valiant work by Christian Daly, cashing in on a break of the ball from Ali Maxwell. So the battery of photographers there, taking these pictures of the Dundee United players who have earned this the hardest possible way. Well, they're all the congratulations, Billy McKinley there with his skipper Morris Malpass. So Alec Cleland has now acquired a, a tangerine wig. Ivan Golac with Craig Brewster, the manager with the goal scorer. So Craig Brewster promoted a year ago with Ray Drover. He didn't stay there. He came across to Tannadice to win the cup for Dundee United. Scott Crabb had a touch of the cup. And there's David Neri. So after a year over Dundee United. He's played his last match for the club, but he holds that trophy aloft. A fitting way to end the marvellous career. So the honours in the end go to the men from Tayside. The Dundee United performance was outstanding, and they have the reward. It's Dundee United who have won the day.
wonderfully happy and emotional scenes around Hampden and the United at long last have laid that cup hoodoo and have won the Scottish East Cup and uh, Christian Daly the man who did so much to create the winning goal is down with Rob McLean Oh, I can't believe I know that. No, actually, it was, it was running away before it hit the post, but we just let the cranes there to put it in. What an experience, absolutely tremendous. You must have got the surprise of your life when the, the attempt at clearance from Ali Maxwell hit you. Well, that's right. Well, I thought I did my first. I think his first part was slightly short. And uh, I knew I could see uh, Maxwell was going to take every chance, so I just had a go. If you take every gamble, there's always a chance you'll get the rebound. And it just worked out great, great for the club. You've had your problems with the United supporters this season. Uh, do you feel you're turning the corner now? Well, I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I played set and half on that and to get away from the forward line, but I came back and played in the forward line today. And the fans have been great and they deserve everything they've got. And just great for United, obviously, to win a cup final. Oh, it's just tremendous. I've been a few myself as a fan and uh, to play and win and to win is just a dream. Well done. Thanks. Jim, what a long, long wait. 20 years a long time, but my goodness, what are your feelings now? Just unbelievable, Hazel. Well, well worth it. Look at this. This is what it sees. People deserve it more than anybody. You said right from the outset you would do it. It was your year. Aye, well, the gaffer made us believe that. And uh, I think we showed the day that we did believe it. Quite a goal to win it, though, wasn't it? Uh, well, that's what happens when you never, never say die. They never gave up the chase and they got the break. Well, you worried the last five minutes, it was pretty tense. You're always there. worried, Hazel. Again, friends, as I came out in, they bombarded us, but I thought we held it well. Well, the Hamden hoodoo is once and for all finished. Which is what you talk about now. Absolutely. <laughs> well done to Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Hazel. Thank you. Hamden, a sea of tangerine and black, and uh, whatever your allegiance, I think one has to feel so much delight for those uh, Dundee United fans who, over the years, have travelled back the road in the miles to Dundee so many times after losing finals. Uh, you really have to uh, wish them all the best in their celebration tonight when they finally get underway. Eamon, hey, you've been part of so many losing finals. Uh, an emotional day today, I'm sure. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to see the players, the, the ones I know personally, out there celebrating and uh, the, the fans enjoying it so much as well. United played very, very well the first half. They got the goal and then they rode their luck a little bit, but uh, all credit to them. Fantastic. Um, you uh, obviously were looking for a Rangers win, Terry, but uh, you only have to look at those fans behind and, and to our left and see what it means to them. Yeah, I mean, I've talking, talking to a few of the fans beforehand, uh, um, Dundee United fans, they were, they were just, just quietly confident, just, just really come to enjoy the day, and uh, obviously they'll enjoy it even more now, but all, all credit to Dundee United. Um, they've got the goal, uh, Rangers bombarded them second half, but they held out well. I mean, everybody in the Dundee United team is a hero, so, you know, well, well done, Dundee United. Yeah, their game plan was right, wasn't it? Well, it was. It, you know, they, they stifled the full Rangers full backs. The service of the front men wasn't very good. And yet, when they got the ball, they broke well and you know, were able to have a lot of confidence in themselves to, to really attack uh, Rangers. And uh, you know, they, they got the goal a bit too early, I think, from their point of view. But you know, they, they, they really held on well. Well, let's take a look back over some of the highlights of that uh, second half. A marvellous first 45 minutes, which finished goalless, of course. Uh, we only had to wait two minutes for the goal, which was eventually to decide the outcome of this tenant Scottish Cup final. Eamon, how did you see it? Well, did McPherson pass it back to Maxwell. And I, I felt he should have kicked it straight down the park. Then he took a chance to play it to the side. Hit Christian Daly, he played it in and bang. 1-0. He'll never score an easier goal than that. Ali Maxwell clearly felt that the McPherson pass back was, was the problem. Would you uh, go along with that, Terry? Or some of the blame maybe lying with Ali Maxwell? Well, that's one of those things, I think, you know, when it comes to cup finals, sometimes a, a goal like that does decide it, which, which has happened. But, uh, I mean, there were so many chances in the first half, so many better chances at the end of the day. Um, well created by Dundee United, and then all of a sudden Rangers really give them. I mean, uh, you know, he could have put it anywhere, really. I mean, he, some goalkeepers sometimes play safe there and put it out for a throw, and, you know, it's not the easy option. But uh, he tried to get a bit of distance. He's hit the player. Jimmy Allett. He slows it down well, Mike. Christian Daly, give him credit, has slows it down well sure. on his left foot. It's a target there. Craig Brewster, typical striker. You can't miss from there. That's a thin margin between success and failure in cup finals. When that ball hit the post, it could have gone anywhere, but it fell beautifully for Craig Brewster. Well, that's right. I mean, in previous cup finals, I mean, I've always maintained that it's one incident that can change a cup final. That was the incident this time. In previous games, it's been maybe a, a goal chopped off. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's exactly what I said after. They, they got that little piece of luck which is required, uh, and, and they went on to win the game. Did you feel that uh, there was going to be a Rangers goal coming in that second half? Did you get that impression? 
so I got the impression it was United's day. Um, and I think the players knew that as well. I mean, the final ball, the Rangers was very poor. Yeah. Welsh was brilliant against Hately, and he never really got any service at all. Malfa snubbed out McCoy's completely, and he stopped the fullback in down the park. I mean, United's game plan was spot on, I thought. Yeah. Man of the match was Gordon Petrich. Would you go along with that, Terry? I think it was very hard to pick a man of the match from, from the uh, Dundee United team because they're all so very, very good. But I think he mastered the defence well. He was very cool on the ball, sometimes a bit too cool. But, you know, he was always there in the right place. And uh, he really, you know, him and obviously Maris, uh, Maris Malpass and, uh, and Welsh really stifled the range of the attack. And the United players there is Gordon Patrick, the man of the match. Jaron Nixon uh, alongside him. He made an impact in his short time on the pitch, certainly. And the celebrations, as I'm sure you can hear, are still going on here at Hamden. Those United fans simply don't want to leave. They're enjoying their day in the sunshine. <laughs> Running through the full repertoire of United songs. And my goodness, have waited a long time to sing them. Well, uh, Rangers had one or two chances in that second half, certainly. That the United uh, back four under enormous pressure at times. And uh, certainly Alexei Mikhailichenko had a real chance, which was a marvellous save from Guido van der Kamp. What about this one, Terry? Yes, Stuart McCall does very well here. Goes past a couple of players. Good bit of footwork. Goes past another fourth player. Good, good, good turn in. Uh, I mean, that was a marvellous save. I mean, all uh, Mikhailichenko's done there. He's done the right thing. Hit the target. Stuart McCall deserves a lot of credit for the way he's battled through. He's got two, gone past two there, three players. I think the fourth one comes across now. I think that's Petrich. Goes past him, which is a good ball in left foot. There's never two men out of the game. Mikhailichenko would have scored, but for a marvellous save. Yes, Mikhailichenko did everything right, really, in him, didn't he? And he had his shot on target. It was an instinctive save. I mean, and again, a, a little point in the game where suddenly the United players have a belief that they're going to do it, and the Rangers players think, oh, no, we're never going to score. And there was one other save later on in the game as well. Which, uh, Van de Kamp, when he was called upon, was, was very good. It was strange that with Hatley and McCoy so well shackled, as Terry was saying, that the best chances seem to fall to players like Mikhailichenko, who are not out and out strikers. That's right, and Dave McPherson had two or three half chances as well. Again, guys that aren't used to scoring goals or, or aren't as good at scoring goals. Yeah. Uh, and that suited United. You know, the ball blasted over the bar and perhaps instead of ending up the back of the net. Gordon Jury had a good one as well in the second half. We're going to have a look at that now, which again saw the chance fall to Alexei Mikhailichenko. Terry? Yes, he takes the ball on well here. He's gone he's, he's past two players, puts it out wide. I think he's at, he's at a very tight angle there. I think he's, that's really an ambitious shot, and I think any centre forward on the far post, Mark Haley in particular, would have been disgusted with that ball hitting the side netting. But, uh, you know, if you don't shoot, you don't score, so uh, he fancied himself. I think if he'd been a little bit closer in, you know, Mark Haley pulled away the far post there, you see. And I think Again, he's, he's, a I very think crowded six-yard box. It might have been hard to get I the ball. He, I think if you're going to shoot there, I think you've got to shoot across the keeper, so that if he does save it, he pushes it out for somebody to, to, to uh, have a tap in. Yes, rather than shoot for, for near post. Mark Haley did, in fact, have uh, one shot, and a very good shot it was, too, taking the first time. His uh, threat tends to go more in the air, Haley, but as we all know, he's got enormous skill on the ground, and another Rangers chance fell to uh, the big striker here. Takes this one well, Terry, doesn't he? Well, he hits it with his, uh, his wrong foot, so to speak, with his right foot, but he hits the target. But the keeper gets his body behind it, and then he's really alive to the rebound, comes up and uh, smothers it. I think Ali McCoy was in, was in coming in, but Mark does hit this well. And if you don't shoot, you don't score. Came at a nice height for Van der Kamp, to be fair, but it was yeah, very well struck him. Just it? one of those things on the day, the ball just uh, seemed to squirm away. If you can restrict players to shooting from 25 yards, then uh, you've, you've done well defensively. I mean, the goalkeeper should save that most times, you know. Yeah, just for a second there, man, you know, horrible memories of Duncan Shearer's goal in the semi-final, which yeah. slipped under his body, didn't it? Over the line, that's right. Uh, but Van der Kamp was very good overall, I thought. Very confident uh, and coped with everything. And uh, then towards the end, Craig Brewster very nearly had the chance to wrap things up for United. I wonder about this one, Ben. Uh, even did he do the right thing? Well, I thought the legs had went really in Craig. He, to me, he was the man of the match up until about the hour mark, and then he's, he just got so tired. Nixon peels off beautifully here, and I felt he should have given it to him. He tried to beat the goalie, possibly for the glory. That, that would have been the game over then, about five or ten minutes to go. Uh, yeah, but Maxwell, Maxwell did particularly well, stood up. He's a tired man by this stage. He's thinking, just hit the target, and Maxwell stood there and saved it. Yeah, but the little cut back to Nixon, Terry, and you'd have had to avenge him to make it 2-0, really, wouldn't you? Yes, he looks very relaxed as he comes in here. I don't really think he has a look. I just, I was just 
think he thinks I'll just hit the target here, but Ali Maxwell will just stand up well. I think uh, I'm not too sure if the range of players coming back into the left of the pitch, he would have got back in time, but uh, it was a good chance. And uh, what, just one last final incident towards the end, uh, a severe challenge on uh, Guido van der Kamp, which I think we can see wasn't actually a foul at all. It looked very much like it, but a lot of big men going up for high balls in the area at the end. And uh, I don't really think there was any foul there, Eamon. Would you agree? No, uh, seeing it there, I mean, uh, Duncan Ferguson, who's got a tremendous leap, he jumps as high as a goalkeeper and it's just six to one and a half a dozen of another. Ball breaks again, it didn't fall to a Rangers player. Another little incident where they think, oh no, but, you know, we're not going to score today. I think in the end it was really Rangers just resorting to that long ball into the middle where I think obviously Welsh and Petrich did so well in the air and it, whenever the ball did bounce, it was Petrich to like volley the way. So there we are, that's how it ended with a victory going at last to Dundee United by a goal to nil. And I have to say that the United fans are still... Uh, I was going to say on the Hamden slopes, they're not really slopes anymore, they're all seated, not that many of them were uh, sitting down towards the end of the match, but uh, they're reluctant to leave, marvellous scenes around Hamden, the, all the tangerine and black, the celebrations beginning, the Arabs at last have something to celebrate. History was always going to be made here today, of course, at Hamden, it was either going to be the double treble for Rangers, or it was going to be Dundee United's first ever Scottish Cup win, in the end, it was the latter. Uh, of course, the man of the match, as we mentioned, was Gordon Petrich, and uh, we've been running a run of the match competition throughout uh, this afternoon. We are we're offering you the chance to travel to the Charity Shield match at Wembley uh, between Manchester United and Blackburn Rovers, and uh, Gordon Petrich was the choice of George Charles Fogg. Give us his full name. He's from 23 Caird Avenue in Dundee, and I would imagine that George tonight has a double reason to celebrate. I would suspect he's a United fan, and he'll certainly be heading off as a guest of tenants to Wembley on the 14th of August to see Manchester United against Blackburn Rovers in the Charity Shield with uh, a flight down, a limousine to take him to a champagne lunch and all the business at Wembley on the day. And no matter how much he enjoys it, I suspect he might not enjoy it as much as he's enjoyed the match this afternoon. Rob was hinting at it, Eamon, in, in the uh, after-match interviews about this being the start of something for Dundee United. And uh, you would have to agree with that. Yes, I, so we'd, I mean, they've formulated quite a good sign and since Gordon Petrich has arrived, they, they do look a very stable side. They've, they've been up and down. But they've got some good young players, uh, possibly one or two players away from being a major force in, in Scottish football, but that's a tremendous platform to build on. And of course, Tannadice itself is going to be a very impressive stadium, and all of the current work going on will be completed, and presumably then money can be diverted into strengthening the squad. Well, that's right. Obviously, they've spent a lot of money building the new stand. Uh, obviously, selling Duncan Ferguson paid for a large chunk of it, but uh, they will be, once that's complete, I mean, every, oh, well, most clubs are in that position. They're diverting a lot of their funds into to building the stadium up. And once that's free, perhaps we can buy another couple of quality players. Mm -hmm. As you say, there are a lot of good young players, the Dailies, the McLarens, the Hannas, the Bolands, who presumably, if they can hold on to them, will be mainstays of the side for years to come. I think Ivan made the, the point at Ibrox, there were seven players who were under 21 years of age, which is, which is great. And, and certainly the, the young ones there today didn't let the side down at all. Yeah. But you, I'm sure, feel particularly pleased for the Morris Malpasses and the Jim McAnally's and the Davy Bowmans. Well, I do. It's personal friends uh, from the backroom staff, from guys that are actually playing, uh, from the fans even. I mean, I, I know the, the feeling of being out there and not winning it, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased for them tonight. Yeah. So. From the, the Rangers' point of view, Terry, I mean, you wouldn't want to take anything away from United. You haven't, but uh, on the day, Rangers perhaps disappointing? Will their fans be upset, perhaps, by the fact that they didn't rise to the occasion? I think they'll be disappointed. The Rangers players will be absolutely gutted now in the changing rooms. I mean, it's nice to keep winning uh, doubles, trebles, or whatever. But uh, when you do lose a final, you know, on a, a nice sunny day, as it turned out at the end, it's uh, it is very, very disappointing because you've got no game next week or whatever to put it right. You've got to live with this now all summer. So I think the Rangers uh, hierarchy, whether it be uh, David Murray or, or Walter Smith and Archie Knox, they'll, they'll look at things very seriously. And Rangers keep building all the time, and I'm sure they'll be looking for the plans next year. But uh, it's disappointing on the day, I think. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to take anything away from Dundee United. I mean, I thought they, they thoroughly deserved their win. They looked confident. They looked really as if they had perhaps more of a belief that, that they could win the game today. So uh, all credit to them. Yes, it, it's uh, disappointing, obviously, to lose the chance of the, the double treble. But uh, I think we are going downstairs again. Chick Young has, uh, has reappeared, and uh, he's with Walter Smith. Walter, so much expected from Rangers this afternoon. Clearly disappointed. I was very disappointed in my heart in which we lost the game and the goal that we lost. I wouldn't say we were totally disappointed by the way we played in the match. I felt the first half was a good first half. Both teams opportunities to get a goal. 
in the second half we made the mistake early in the game which dictated the rest of the match and we weren't able to get the breakthrough that was required Gary Stevens uh, limped off after half an hour what's the news of him? I uh, damaged his ankle there he stubbed his toe in the ground and, and he cut his ankle but badly swollen just now there was no sense of taking a gamble with the fitness of Stevens in the first place was it? well he kicked the ground yeah, so, but he started the game in full condition obviously ah. so going into the next season now there'll be talk of changes in the Rangers team in the summer will that happen? I don't think this is the time to talk about and um, changes with Rangers I think You've got to look at the squad of players that we've, that we've got at the present. Um, over the last three years, they've been by far the best team in Scotland. You know, I think it's been a credit to Rangers. I think um, they've handled themselves really well over that period. And I think it's time to look back on that and reflect on the fact that they were the first domestic team to win seven trophies in a row. And I think they deserve terrific credit for that. I don't think it's time for any manager to be talking about making changes. Do you think the talk of double trebles was putting too much pressure on them over the last few weeks? I don't think so. If you look at the game in the second half, we pushed and pushed and tried to get the goal. And we would maybe just didn't get a break. That happens to you in cup ties. We've had the breaks in other ones. We didn't get the break today. And that's the way a cup tie goes. That's what makes it so difficult to do as we have done and won the amount of trophies we have done in a row. If you put yourself into a neutral corner, both it was a great, great game. I thought the first half was a terrific match. Um, and obviously losing the goal as early in the second half, you know, made us push to get the goal. And Dundee United could sit back and defend and uh, to the credit they did that well. Well, thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Arthur Smith obviously disappointed, but uh, philosophical about uh, the loss of the double treble. A chance that really only comes once in a lifetime, Terry, and uh, that, that will be even more disappointing for the Rangers players. Yeah, I think it's a club record, six championships in a row, so they are writing the, or rewriting the uh, record books all the time, but I think the game today was a, you know, was a great way to end this season. I mean, a lot has been said about Scottish football this year, but it was a great way to finish. Even the sun came out at the end, which was great. You know, and uh, you look at Dundee United, a lot of young players in the team. You know, that, that always, you know, the, the, the future always well for them. And uh, you know, if they can build on that, and uh, obviously Rangers will be smarting from defeat and keen to, you know, pick up a treble next year. So yeah. you know, it's it's now. Uh, and yet you, wa you wonder when, uh, admittedly, Dundee United hadn't finished the league season in a blaze of glory either. But whether the fact that Rangers had gone off the boil, it's hard to get back into the winning habit. I mean, that's the first time I think since 1985 Rangers have gone four consecutive games without scoring a goal. Yeah, I think it's. Um, but then again, when, it, when the championship's won and you, you know you're virtually there, you do try physically to, to like try and rest a little bit and not put so much into things just to try and pre uh, prepare for them when it comes to the cup final, so they can put everything into it. But you know the, the first half, especially as Walter has said, was was very open. Both sides could have scored goals, and you know you never know. Mm. But certainly, ev in the evidence of today, they don't look like a side that could nick a run in the Champions League, for example, next season, which is the obvious uh, ambition for everyone at Ibrox. We assume there will be some big money spent this summer. Well, like I said, Walter and uh, David Murray got to go away and look and see what's in the coffers first and then see you know, what other deals you can make. But as Walter says, it's not really the right time to do that. They'll do that come the, come the summer months and then, and then look at things from a different point of view. But uh, uh, it is disappointing for them because you know it would have been nice to, to, to have got the double treble, but uh, it, it wasn't to be today. It was under United's day, no one's arguing with that. And there is a difference going into the Cup Winners' Cup as Cup winners rather than almost by default because yeah. you were runners up, isn't it? Well, there is, but I think United were were absolutely delighted when they made it to the cup final they were guaranteed Europe and they took the foot off the pedal as well in, mm. in the, the final run into the league I mean you could voice the same criticism as you have against Rangers and yet they won today it was interesting that Walter immediately went on the defence of his players there and, and immediately started to build up their confidence for the start of next year Sure. and there's no way he's going to come out and, and say anything critical about them because they, they have been absolutely fantastic over the last four or five years they've won league titles, they've won cups uh, today it wasn't for them. I think he, he hit the nail on the head when he said yeah, we didn't have that piece of luck. Uh, and I've maintained that in, in times before where, where I've been in losing cup finals. And that's the difference. They, they, they lost it today and suddenly everyone starts to analyse now. Why, why did you go wrong? Sure. Let's spend players, let's change. And the opposite happens with United. Uh, that's football. That's the way it goes. You're right. yeah. And we shouldn't forget the fact that they have done the double. They've won seven domestic trophies in a row. It's still been a very successful season for Rangers. On a broader issue, I think it's, it was quite good that Rangers haven't won the treble again mm. uh, to monopolise the way they have in, in the last few years in, in Scottish football I don't think it's been particularly good they, they've deserved their league titles yes but if, if clubs can't come in and win the odd cup game uh, it begins to get a bit boring really yeah. you know I mean, I mean that, that's upset the apple cart a little bit which is good I think for Scottish football absolutely the Rangers fans won't agree with you of course of course but I think, as you say <laughs> to take a, take a broader viewpoint yeah. then it probably is better for the game that United should, should have won the cup today let's take a look again at uh, the goal then which finally decided this 1994 tenant Scottish Cup final not a classic 
Uh, you have to attribute blame clearly to, well, Dave McPherson and uh, Alan Maxwell to uh, whichever extent. But uh, credit to Christian Daly for being in the right place. And for setting up that chance for Craig Brewster to score the winner. That really is a bit of a comedy of errors when you see it again, Eamon, isn't it? It is. I mean, Alan Maxwell had another chance to get it there. Christian Daly was alert to it. I honestly wouldn't pay particular blame to, to Dave McPherson. I think Gally Maxwell should have played the ball in a safer area. And uh, unfortunately, he'll be remembered for that from now on. Very similar to the uh, 1989 Cup when I played and, and uh, Gary Stevens made a, made a mistake and yeah. allowed Joe Miller to score. You know, these Cup finals are decided by things like this. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't apportion blame to Ali or to Dave McPherson. I would just say Christian Daly did absolutely magnificently in blocking it and then having a cool head and... Uh, sharp feet to get the ball on then and uh, obviously Craig Brewster had that never say die spirit and he squeezed it into an awfully tight angle here's the reaction of Ivan Golats when the final whistle finally blew a little bit delayed but uh, my goodness there's no mistaking the delight of uh, the man who has finally turned around in the United's cup luck first thing he does is to go to the opposition bench and to commiserate with Davy Dodds and with Walter Smith and Archie Knox as a, a very obvious bond between managers and coaching staff in various clubs they all know what each other go through and then having uh, commiserated with the opposition a word with Gordon Wallace the rest of the backroom team and then the celebrations begin and you go through all the routine of wearing the funny hats and posing with a cup in your head and all these photographs that you probably regret in the cold light of day but at the time seems like absolutely the right thing to do so where do we go from here, I, I wonder? I mean, would you go along with, with Eamon, Terry, that uh, it's a good thing for Scottish football in the wider sense that Rangers haven't won today? Um, speaking as a neutral now, <laughs> I'll try to speak as near to a neutral as I can. I think it's, uh, it's good now. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, Dundee United have shown that they've you know, uh, had a right go at it and, and won the cup. And uh, it's up to other clubs to pick up that, that challenge, really, and uh, to say, right, you know, we, we'll, we'll have a go at things. Because I think the more teams are in contention, in the, in the Premier League especially, you know, the more open it is, the more exciting it is. And, you know, there's, there's much more to uh, um, look forward to, but uh, if there is a total one-club domination, then, uh, you know, as Eamon says, it does become boring and everybody goes, oh, no, here again. But uh, Sunday United have proved that they've, you know, come on the day, you know, they've, they've, they've made the challenge, you know, and, uh, and won. So, you know, why can't other clubs now pick up that challenge? Yeah. Well, there is a financial gulf, which is a, a major factor now in, in, in football in the 90s, and as we head towards the year 2000, uh, so much of it is about commercial income and the money that can be generated to buy the best players, not just from this country, but from around Europe. Yeah, but uh, you look at Ivan Golak and the uh, Dundee United players, they had the belief that they could win the game today. Now, they'll, they'll carry that belief even more strongly now towards the, the start of the next season, the, the belief that they can go out and, and win the league. You know, why not? Um, other teams, if they have that belief, you know, can do it. OK, teams like Rangers will have millions of pounds to spend or have spent millions of pounds, but, you know, come, come one match, 90 minutes, 11 men against 11 men has been, has been proved today. You know, if the, the team really fancies it and really knuckles down, they can win. Tell you one man we haven't really talked about since the final whistle, and that's Jim McLean. You know him as well as anyone. Yeah, how, how I think, will he be feeling? I think Jim will be absolutely delighted. I mean, obviously, now what's going to happen.